Good afternoon and welcome to the October meeting of the Housing Opportunity Funds Advisory Board. Um, we certainly are our second meeting in chamber, so still working out some of our hybrid uh, tech glitches, even um, those that are self-imposed. Um, we're gonna begin with our roll call. Lena Andrews. Here. Oliver Beasley. Dr. Jamil Bay. Joanna Deming. Here. I'm sorry, I heard two here's. I'm here. Okay. Um, Jerome Jackson. Here. Mark Masterson. Here. James Myers. Marcus Reed. Dr. Paul Spradley. Sonia Tillman. Derek Tillman. Here. Adrian Wolnaha. Present. I am Kelly Ware and I am here. And Megan Winters. Here. Okay. So we will be um, go ahead and move forward with the review and acceptance of our minutes from our last meeting on September 1st. Did everyone have an opportunity to review the minutes? Do we have any corrections or changes to the minutes? If not, I will entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? Okay. The minutes um, will be accepted as distributed. We do not have any registered public commenters online and no one present in the gallery. Um, so we will move forward to a presentation on fair housing by Megan Confer Hammond. So Megan Confer Hammond is not able to come today and she's gonna postpone that presentation until sometime in November. And we'll discuss that uh, a little more in the URA administrative updates. All right, then uh, Jad, you can stay off mute and uh, walk us through the allocation plan. Okay. So I'm going to stop sharing this agenda really quick and share another screen with everybody. Bear with me for one second. Okay. So I took the averages of everybody from the advisory board that went ahead and put their proposed budgets in. And I created this sheet that has the advisory board members average budget for each AMI level. It has the URA staff recommendations. And then I created a compilation um, in the two, 2023 draft just to start the conversation. So the averages from the board didn't equate to the exact amounts that were needed just due to the way averages work. Um, so in that difference, I adjusted a little bit to account for some of the URA recommendations as well. So to look at this document here, um, we really wanna look at the third column for each of these three areas so that we can start this conversation to determine how we want to fund these projects going forward um, for next year. And I don't know if anybody has any initial thoughts looking at this or wants to start off the conversation anywhere in particular, um, but I will open it up to the board or any comments and to start this conversation. I don't have a specific point that I wanna start at, um, but I think it's important if there were any specific places where the URA staff really felt, I, I know that you made very cautious and mindful recommendations, um, but if there's anywhere that there's a discrepancy between you know where the board was landing at 
and where the URA staff was landing at. Um, if there's anything that really stands out to you that you feel like maybe there are pieces that you know, the board members didn't have, you know, you know, the best information to make decisions or any places that you were concerned um, if there wasn't an exact alignment. I think that's always helpful to find out, you know, from folks who are operating the programs, if there's any place that you feel really strongly that this is, this is the right number and maybe we're missing the mark for some reason. Yeah, so, you know, a lot of the things that the board had input did align with a lot of our recommendations. There were some differences where, you know, for example, at different AMI levels, there was some discrepancy of where we had put that versus where the board put it. Um, some of them we put at 50% AMI versus 30% AMI, just so there's the opportunity to, you know, address anybody at 50 AMI or under, because these AMI levels are, you know, 30 AMI and below, 50 AMI and below, just to provide more opportunity there. Um, but, you know, overall, I think that they did somewhat align and the, you know, compiled draft numbers, I think where I started off at were a decent compromise. Um, you know, I don't know if anybody else like Evan or Derek, if you have any additional comments that you, you know, think there is some larger discrepancies that you want to address. No, I, I don't believe there were any um, discrepancies once we got to this point. Um, I think through the working session that we had with the advisory board, um, it became clear to the staff what some of the important um, items this year might be, such as the demonstration program. Uh, I believe in the 2022 plan there was no funding for it, and we made sure to, to add it in um, this year. So I think we, through the consistent conversations we've had have sort of we're able to kind of anticipate what would be important to the advisory board and I think that kind of shows with how relatively similar you know the averages came out to be with what our recommendation was and one thing I will note as well Mark I know you had you know a particular demonstration program that you added there um, so I did add you know into the description of the demonstration program some of what you were mentioning um, in the document itself. So that is something on the document whenever we submit that, that that's included in that. And I just combined your numbers with the rest of the demonstration dollars. Thank you. Um, I, I do have a question, you know, the, the staff recommendation at the, with the um, homeowner assistance program, uh, which is, I kind of look at it as it's preserving affordable housing stock, getting roofs and furnaces and you know, repairs to houses so that they can be, uh, remain affordable and people aren't having to leave because the house isn't functional anymore. Um, that got cut and yet that's the program that we, it seems like we fund it, it's open for applications for a month or two and then the rounds are shut down because it's all, it's gone. And I, I'm not sure why we would cut that um, as a board and I'm not, you know, Curious for folks that didn't want to see it, maybe they can enlighten me. Because I, I was thinking that that was something that would be hard to replace with uh, maybe uh, some of the uh, COVID emergency funding that I think is going to come to the URA for different uh, development projects or development programs. It might be hard to use those funds, or am I missing it that it's easy to use those for individual homeowners? Is there another source that I, we don't know about? to fund that? Um, that's not that's directly um, kind of earmarked at this moment. There was um, the whole home repair bill that was passed recently, but that's still sort of being worked out. Um, so uh, just to clarify your question, are you saying the uh, advisory board kind of mean slash recommendation was cut by the staff or it was cut from no staff uh, the the number that we have in our draft today is lower than this like you know again we're talking 100 or 200 thousand difference in each of these line items but that was the one program that i would think we if anything we'd want to throw more at and not reduce because you know you guys know what the pipeline is how many people are on the waiting list for that right now I'd have to defer to, to that's Derek. okay kind of round number you know roughly 
Is it a cut from previous years or a cut? I'm trying to. It's, it's, a, it's both, I believe. Um, I have to look. I, I, it have is. To look I can time. pull up the um, year over year just as a point of context. Give me one second to pull that up. Because there's, um, based on what our recommendations were this year, it is equal to or greater, but, uh, but I don't have the previous years in front of me. Um, it's just the challenge of being in person versus yeah, virtual. That's <laughs> being a, virtual. This is maybe the wrong meeting to be, be no, in I mean, person. No, it's, but, it's funny. It's just like one of those right. things where I'm like, I'm used to being able to search Open, while you're right. talking. And I'm like, I, I'm not, because um, from this, it's this, it's the same, if not slightly higher. Uh, and this, this is Derek uh, with the URA. Uh, to answer, Mark, your question on the pipeline, you know, we're, we're sitting at, yeah, I mean, it's about 120 or so folks that are on the wait list currently. Um, yeah, and I, you know, I think it, the, the numbers that we're presenting today, at least in my mind, wasn't a cut. Uh, I mean, I think I need to, to look at the numbers again. Um, but, you know, I, our goal, you know, with our staff recommendation was to really sort of keep it at least you know, steady level of funding. Um, you know, at least from my perspective, I think if we were going to throw more resources at, you know, the HAP program, it would be, what's really needed is a, like a significant, you know, increase in that program, which isn't something we can do within the current limitations of the $10 million that, that we're working with. Um, you know, and there are other things we need to do, you know, with all of these funds. Um, so, I mean, I think my position is to keep it at its current level, um, you know, but, you know, it, certainly open to increasing it. Uh, that was just sort of from the staffing recommendation. So, it was. Yeah, last year the allocation was 2150000 So it would be a $40,000 cut, but the staff recommendation for this year was, um, yeah, what was it, $2.6 million. And, you know, that is a significant, you know, in the confines of what we're doing, that's a significant increase. And, yeah. you know, there, there might be other, that's why I was asking, are there other funds that will likely be coming that can help in some of these other um, areas that we should be thinking about? As we so, Derek, I thought, I'm not, I'm not totally in the loop on whole home repairs, but I thought that was a fair amount of money that was coming I mean, I know they're working on the regulations and it's not here yet, but I sense that it was moving fairly quickly and it is for home repairs for low-income homeowners. Like, it's very similar to what half funds. Uh, yes, you're, you're right, Lena. Um, that it, it most likely will be a significant amount of money for home repairs. Yeah, 12, 13 million maybe coming to the county. Um, so not all of that will be, you know, available in the city, but... Um, yeah, I mean, that is coming. We just don't know how that's going to interact with our current program. Uh, that's, you know, we're still trying to figure that out. And I think there were some delays in expenditures on some of the state money that was coming through PHFA. If I'm, Lynn Lena, you may have this in your head too. Um, um, there the, are delays in some of the. The ARP funds, like a lot of that has been delayed at the city, county, and the state level. I don't know as much about the whole home repair, but I sensed that that one was moving fairly quickly. Um, I, I mean, you never know until the program is created and the money is here. So who knows when it will show up, but it is, it is resources for this purpose that will get here eventually. So you know, given this conversation with the homeowner assistance program, is it something where, you know, we want to keep this recommended level or something we think should be increased to more align with URA staff recommendations? I just don't, I don't want to, you know, I'd like to see us not have 120 on a wait list. And if you're telling, if, if there's other monies that are going to come, that those people would be eligible to get the help, you know, uh, that's fine. I just don't want to, that wait list is going to grow if we cut, I think, from what the recommended staff level was, if there's not another way to pay for it. Yeah, and to give context as well, you know, 
indicating that it was a forty thousand dollar or yeah forty thousand dollar increase or decrease that would be about one individual getting additional services because uh, they can do about thirty five thousand dollars per project at this time but again i'm just looking at what the staff recommendation was 2.6 million and 2.1 and change is a pretty that's 10 houses right somewhere around that yeah yep I do I do think um, it's one of our big issues which we've talked about a lot is the um, the reason for the waiting list is mostly because of contractor availability so um, uh, you know the more money we put into the program just for the program itself may not necessarily speed up the waiting list it might actually make it grow um, this is where sort of we're working internally at the URA on uh, things like minority contractor, line of credits, um, some type of program that can help to sort of build capacity so that we can move people through this program at a faster pace. And I also think it's important as we start talking about the rollout of other funds, something that we don't always have the luxury of doing is talking about how they're going to intersect. In whole homes, this is going to be a rollout that many people who are sitting around the table are part of that conversation. So making sure that the programs can really dovetail with each other so that, you know, we're getting the maximum benefit per household. You know, the funds are stretched further. We have those good dollars for, you know, coordination of care, um, resource enhancement for the people that are using the program so they understand all the different programs that can layer together. Um, so this actually is one of those unique moments in time where the HOF really could you know, assist our partners, um, the URA and the county, to talk about how these funds are going to leverage other funds and how families are going to get more. So let's not let that drop off the table. <laughs> um, and as those conversations are emerging and we have those points of advocacy, let's be sure that we're, you know, really focused and um, diligent in getting those resources combined. One thing I'd like to say is um, I think the, the numbers look, um, you know, pretty much close to alignment with uh, what, what we're hearing and, and also even, I guess, our mean and the recommendations are pretty close. Um, one thing that jumps out at me is the for sale development program. Um, you know, I think there's still a need to build more uh, you know, affordable for sale housing. And um, I'm not quite sure how we do that with, with these limitations, but I would like to see that number increase. Um, yeah, I, I think about just more production, um, anything that we can do to, you know, produce more housing, um, whether it's rental, whether it's for sale, as well as creating more homeowners um, and existing, uh, helping existing homeowners but just all about, you know, more production. And I think the uh, for sale seems to be the one that is um, really lower than uh, I think it should be. I'm feeling like a chatty Kathy today. Um, so I think Derek, to your point, Something that Mark's been talking about consistently is how many different ways can we split up $10 million when every year the programs get more expensive? Um, so again, another thing for us to have, you know, in our, in our view is every year this is gonna be more difficult. And each one of these things is a priority or they wouldn't have been in the list to begin with. So you know, is 2023 the year that we can really think about leveraging other funds to match up and align with funds that the HOF has in a more intentional way? How do we make the pot bigger so that it's not choosing between, you know, do we value home ownership? Do we value, you know, people stabilizing in rental housing? Do we value the creation of new rental units? Each year, and, and I would assume other members are feeling the same way, you know, it's $10 million. It's going to remain $10 million. So if we're talking about every project being more expensive, every you know, new home that's built being more expensive, everyone you know, feeling that rental crunch because the housing stock is more expensive but their salaries aren't going up. Um, 
I would love to see us start to strategize a little bit more. And again, I'll give credit to Mark because he always brings us to the table of, if the pot never gets bigger, we're gonna do less. Also on the topic of um, additional sources, when it comes to for sale development, Derek, I fully agree that uh, that's a very important effort just overall for the affordable housing ecosystem in the city. But something I would wanna call out is that um, in the ARPA uh, legislation and earmark for the URA, there's um, up to $5 million to support community land trusts in that. And so um, that is definitely an infusion of uh, capital for that type of effort that we have not seen recently. So uh, I would defer to the advisory board if you do want to change that, but I want to give you a kind of on top of our normal sources outside of HOF, like CDBG and home that the URI often gets on an annual basis, there is this um, uh, other pot of funds that we'll be looking at in the near future, probably six to 12 months. And I know we reviewed this and it might be in the executive summary that I've not looked at, but have we depleted our for sale development funds for this year or do we have a carryover? Um, if it, it would, show up as a carryover uh, that's somewhat of a function of our just timing of when we make commitments so as far as like applications in hand or in our pipeline i mean we could likely consider ourselves fully committed it hasn't necessarily all gone to this board yet we want to make sure that these projects are really ready to go when we're bringing them to you but it, it is very much so um, in demand with the activity of both just cdc's throughout the city and also um, some of the more active land trusts thank you I think um, I just, I, I want to echo what uh, Mark was talking about earlier with the homeowner assistance program, the, I think kind of going back to that about full home repairs and um, what, 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 what Adrian had mentioned about kind of, this is $10 million, so how do we spend it each year? It hasn't grown bigger, but the sort of statewide homeowner assistance program is, will exist and there is a, there is a part of me that thinks it would make sense for this year for us to bolster that a little bit so that we can get more bang for the buck. And um, it, it would ideally be a program that the Housing Opportunity Fund could plug into and maybe seamlessly for the resident who would be taking the opportunity or taking advantage of these funds. And because that is you know, not known, it, it, I feel like it would make sense for us to invest a little bit more than what we currently have from the average to at least bring it to, um, I'm sorry. So, it seems as though it's a little under what um, was proposed by staff, if I'm seeing correctly. Um, but I think I, I think I would like to talk about potentially bringing that up a little bit, and just if, if other members are open to that conversation. And I will note too, in level of importance to individuals in the survey that was conducted, the rental gap program and the homeowner assistance program are what people indicated as the most important programs uh, to be utilized. Um, and, you know, to Derek uh, Kendall Morris's point from earlier, you know, we do have, you know, all, almost all those funds are committed for HAP. I mean, they're not technically committed, but they are, you know, we have all of the funding is projected to be used. Uh, and we only keep that open for a month every year because of the limited amount of funds we have. But again, to the point um, that Adrian made, you know, there is a limited amount of funds here and how you want to adjust those. But yeah, we're open to any of those options. Let's see, um, are there, does, um, so Megan had made a, a, you know, a suggestion that we try to, find some additional funds um, in our budget to move towards um, the HAP line item. And so I guess I was gonna see if any, without a, taking a formal you know, like motion and vote, but if, if that's the line of conversation and adjustment that we wanna be on, it's kind of hard, but sorry. I feel like I'm looking everywhere but, but and nowhere at the same time. Um, 
as a screen and then there's people. Um, but if we generally agree that that's something that we want to do, um, yes or no, and then maybe take some suggestions as to what we might move if we're going to move some things. Again, acknowledging that the numbers have to stay within the income guideline columns um, that they're in, so it's, we can't um, you know, drag things across, just kind of up and down within each uh, piece, if that's a conversation that everyone is interested in having, or the majority of folks, I should say, are interested in having. We do not require 100%. I have a question that I guess would connect to that possibility. Um, are, are there um, layover funds from HSP, um, or are there other funds, you know, coming from another source that could support that line item? So I think, and sorry, it was hard to hear you there for some reason, but I think you were saying, you know, is there funds from HSP that can be allocated? Is that what you were saying? Um, no, or are there HSP funds from the previous year uh, left over? So how much? And are there any other sources, um, you know, similar to like ERAP that are available, you know, for, for this service? Yeah, so I think the HSP funds were about, and I can look it up here really quick, but I think they were about 60%, um, I want to say. Um, yep. So you're saying 40% is still left over? But that is also given the fact of what Adrian just mentioned as well. Is that that well, they built sorry, for? everybody. Um, I thought that DHS, the contract limit, they were ramping up to get to our contract numbers, um, that it hadn't all been expended, but they had ramped up to get to those contract numbers because the ARPA funds had finalized. So they, I thought that what Andrea had shared was they anticipated a ramp up in this end of the contract period. Okay, okay. So I, I, yeah, that's, I kind that's of correct. With, uh, moving additional funds to HAP. Um, I agree that it's uh, super important, and I think that's why it's prioritized at the number that it is. Um, but yeah, it's just, you know, I struggle with uh, where to pull that from, you know, because I see other items that really should be more, like I said, the for sale development program. Um, yeah, so unless there's another agency um, you know, that may be funding, for example, HSP or even the legal assistance program. Um, I kind of feel like those numbers, you know, should stay where they are. They, they all really should be an increase, not decrease. So my struggle is, uh, where do we pull that from looking at where it is now? Um, I know there's other agencies that, that do the legal assistance, there's other agencies that do the HSP. If there's other sources available there, then I think that makes sense. But all the other uh, components as it relates to production and creating and preserving affordable housing, I really don't think we should, uh, you know, take funds from, from, from them. Uh, just to make a comment, I think on uh, HSP and LAP in terms of you know other funding sources and like what's in the environment currently um, within the city uh, for the the type of program that and the type of work that the legal assistance program supports. Um, you know this funding from the HOF is is really the only source of funding that supports that kind of work within the city currently. Um, and on the HSP side. Uh, there is, you know, some limited funds from the county for that sort of stabilization work, but a lot of that money has gone away uh, over the last few months. So um, I think I would just hesitate to tinker with those things. I mean, we could certainly tinker with them, but I wouldn't want to take too, too much away because those are really, uh, we're, we're sort of the only game in, in town for those things right now. 
With the small landlord fund, is that a loan going into a loan pool or are those grants to small landlords? How does that program work? Uh, it's, it's a loan. It is a loan. So are there other sources that the ORA might be able to use to fund a loan program? Um, at that size and scale, not um, as it stands right now, like it typically goes towards smaller um, projects than what the ORA is typically dealing with, and that was sort of why this was a good fit for HOF. Um, I do think that the program is early on in its kind of concept, and uh, you know, if there was, if we were going to shift funds around, um, especially maybe at the eighty percent mark, you could um, look to that possibly as a reduction to to move into HAP or a different program if you were thinking about it. Thank you. And I will note with the legal assistance program as well, um, the board's recommendations were about 100,000 more than um, our recommendation at the URA. So that is something that, you know, I think we would be willing to take a little bit off of that as well to move. Um, but I can let Derek or Evan speak more to that. Yeah, I think just again, current environment, you know, there may be some flexibility to take limited funds from LAP. Um, just acknowledging, you know, the current work that we're doing within that program to to ramp it up and really sort of change how it operates. You know, uh, I, I think you know, there may be a scenario next year where we come to this board. Uh, I, we, we know we may need more funds as, as things change there, you know, because we are working on, you know, different initiatives with, with the mayor's office around legal assistance to figure out the best way to provide that service. Um, so just, just all that to say, we could take some funding from it from that program today um, but we may need to utilize some demo dollars to support that program in the future if it really takes off the way we hope it does well it's funny i was just actually going to mention demo dollars which we previously had zero in while we expended um prior years um and now we're allocating 325 which has i'm not saying is inappropriate um but if we were to try to find since everything is an identified priority that we've already, um, you know, why it's in the legislation, why it's in the budget. I guess I, 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 I'm split because I believe that HAP is, is, is critically important, but it also seems like we're almost at capacity in terms of the ability to actually get the work done. And we also know that money is coming here. So I'm, I'm a little bit reluctant to pull money from something that is existing and we know doing good work. So if anything, I would recommend perhaps shaving maybe just 25 each off of um off of each category except for the ada ami right because that's only at 50. um to go from the demo dollars which are kind of less defined perhaps um to go towards hap if we were to make if we were to shift anything that would be my um my first inclination because that would get us at least back to the um to, to last year's number plus um 10k because um, i really don't see where 500 would come from without, you know, sacrificing another program. You know, I think to Kelly and other board members' points, you know, this happened last year as well. We had a very vocal group that came and told us that the legal assistance was the most important thing that we were gonna do. Um, and in the meeting, we really switched gears and moved in that direction. You know, I, I think that HAP is incredibly important. Um, but I do think it's challenging when, you know, we come to this meeting and, and want to shift priorities and move money because I feel like all of these things are important. Every one of them has a different constituency. Um, we don't have something that says this thing is going to be more impactful than this other thing. So, you know, it does become a challenge always, I think, in this allocation meeting of what voices are the loudest and how do we start to wave into is owning a home more important than renting a home, which is more important than demo because we might have a disaster or we may have a shelter need. 
you know, so again, with this finite pool of money, this is, this is going to get harder and harder every year. But to a point Derek made, we also might not have the context of you know, the legal services that we provide directly might not be available anywhere else. We have whole homes repair, which is $12 million, which is going to have some impact in the city. We don't know exactly how that's going to roll out. There were some PHFA dollars that were allocated that weren't used. You know, so it's incredibly difficult to say what's going to be the thing that comes into this line item to move it forward versus what the HOF dollars are really going to you know, create, promote, continue. Um, so I'm going to say this again. I think we need to start this process earlier in the year. We need to start prioritizing earlier in the year. Um, not necessarily, you know, we need to start in January talking about what our actual allocations are going to be, but you know, really understanding what the impact of each of these are, where there's holes that are being filled that are really integral to us supporting our communities in a way that makes sense. Um, what other dollars are at play so that we can be, you know, more prepared for what does this allocation really mean and that we can be smarter about those leverage opportunities. So I, I love HAP. I, I would love us to be able to increase that budget, but I, like Kelly, am reticent to say, <clears throat> now today all of those different priorities have changed because we're having a slightly different conversation. So you know, I'm just gonna for, take one for myself of like, I do find this challenging. I think, um, to Adrian's point, this is something that we've kind of played around with, and it, it's kind of a cross between this and an administrative item for later. But measuring our impact, um, we've talked about things that are visual in terms of like yard signs, be like, you know, Hoff was here, we do great work, you know, all of those sorts of things. But also, um, and we've talked about, a little bit about how to get our end consumer's story back to us and how to do that in a way that's not you know, exploitive because sometimes um, government and nonprofit, we, we do that um, in a way that's kind of gross. Um, so doing it in a way that feels genuine, that protects um, people's interests, but also I think that that would help um, this, this process and deciding kind of like what that impact is also through soft, through hard and soft data, like what kind of repairs perhaps are getting fixed through this and maybe, um, a story about what that how, what that impact is for that particular person, and we can really get, if we start that earlier, a more, a better idea of what our progress of um, both what our programs are doing, but also, I think we all see through kind of, not to say that anybody's, um, you know, ignorant of the problem, but we see things through like our sliver. Every when I was a health, you know, like everything was, is this when you're when you're looking at it from that angle, you know, to kind of really make sure we're all having the same kind of uh, conversation, maybe looking at some of the same data, I think would be helpful um, as part of informing this process um, going forward. Um, if we start that earlier and maybe think about what that might look like. Um, and, and I guess back to these numbers um, that we have without all of that um, warm and hard, hard data, um, if there's anybody that would like to propose anything else either that we accept as is I also still as I even though I say like let's move it from demo I like demo because it can go anywhere you want um, within each column as the need arises um, so so but anyway if, there, if there's any about other comments or suggestions as to well, what per, to do perhaps we look at taking that out of the the small landlord fund and leaving that in as a line item but 50,000 less and moving that up to HAP at least as a way to try to keep consistent with what we did last year or somewhere in that ballpark. So that would be for the 50% um, AMI move that from 275 to 225 and put that up? Yes. Okay, because that's... If that is, will that, I mean, I, I, if that'll take us up to, change, yeah, that'll would, take us to, two, to the um, 240, 2140, I believe that we had last year. Does that just uh, totally throw a wrench into the, you know, it, from um, a staff perspective is? It, no, it, I mean, it shouldn't. As long as we're moving, like, within the right. columns. Uh, okay. it, it Up stays, and down, no side to side. Well. So I think Jad is um, updating it, like, uh, live here. So um, what's on the screen can be eventually when a motion's ready, um, what gets approved. 
thoughts, comments on moving um, 50 from the 50%, um, 50,000, excuse me, I'm about to say 50 twice in one sentence, moving $50,000 from the small landlord fund to um, the HAP under the, in the 50% AMI and below um, piece versus something else to make up for where we were last year, if that's something that we wanna do. Thoughts, comments from anyone not in the room? Kelly, this is Paul. Um, you all had, or you had referenced just a few minutes ago, the idea of moving 25,000 from a couple of different spaces. And we, we left that, that conversation, never had a conclusion to it. Are we replacing uh, this most recent recommendation with your recommend, or are we, are we getting rid of yours completely? Or is that something that's still worth considering to talk about? Because it was, Oh, there's still oh, sorry. As the solution first. So they're still both on the table. I mean, I guess there, if if the desire, um, which I think it might be, um, not sure because we can't look around for um, eye contact and nods. Um, but if the agreement, if the if the conversation is to restore last year's funding to the HAP line, then those are two recommendations on the table, and we can discuss and entertain either um, to get to get to that number, which would be one was moving twenty five from demo dollars at both the 30% AMI and um, the 50% AMI would be one way to do that. And then the other would be to move, actually we could do a third, um, or we could move um, 50 from the small landlord fund at 50% AMI, or we could do some combination of the two where we do 25 from 30 and 25 from the 50% AMI. We can really kind of split the, those any way you like. Um, anyway, we'll not, you specifically anyway that is the pleasure of the of the advisory board um but those seem to be the areas where we um at least the two of us um having heard no other comments on that yet would have, would propose to make up that shortfall um through any in any combination of those ways thoughts comments questions from the rest of the group on uh, preferences i have a um, suggestion what if we move um, in the 50, 50% AMI column, 25,000 from the demonstration and 25 from small landlord. So it's not 50 from small landlord only. Moving up to the H. Um, that, that, I, I mean, I, I threw 50,000. That, that is all fine. I'm, you know, just was trying to get the HAP uh, up. And if that's the, the two line items, I'm, it's not pride of ownership. It was just something I said here's where you, here's where you could get it so splitting it that way would be great i'm i'm in favor of that can i make a motion <laughs> well, well I, I guess um yeah i mean i i don't know um just personally um the small landlord fund is a is a very very important program um because it you know rental gap is, is a longer term process small landlord and kind of meet needs now as it relates to, um, you know, creating and preserving affordable housing. That number, that line item is already tr truthfully severely under budget. So to take anything from it, I mean, you know, we're we're bumping up a line item that's two point one million dollars and taking it from a line item that's four hundred thousand, which is you know, for another very important program. Um, we know the housing choice voucher program is going to, going to utilize. Um, and part of the reason is, you know, sometimes the repairs can be cumbersome uh, for for these small landlords. And we, we desperately need all those units. So I'm apprehensive to do that. Um, and demonstration dollars, I, I think, um, you know, it was already voiced that Right now, you know, there's an issue with, you know, trying to work it out with the contractors and, and really meet the demand to where it is now. If we get to the end and we haven't spent the demonstration dollars and we really need those dollars to help and I, we, we can move that at that time. I, I think, you know, I'm, I'm more, uh, you know, supportive of keeping it kind of where it is now we, we could move demonstration dollars if there's no other, you know, emergency or, or just, you know, new 
um, concept that we want to support. Um, so, so, so yeah, I think for, for those reasons, I, again, I'm, I, I support half, and I know why it makes a lot of sense, um, but small landlord makes a lot of sense too, and it's way, way more underfunded than where uh, half is currently. So uh, I, I would not move either of them um, because the flexibility of demo methodologies is just as important. Um, I would just say, you know, leave it where it is. Uh, the reason why I asked about there other programs to support, then it wouldn't really, because all of the programs we know are important, but it wouldn't impact uh, them as much. Um, so, so yeah, so that's 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 really really my thoughts. Uh, I, I think one thing we we should do, uh, going, no matter where we land today, going forward, is really define you know. Who, who we are um, and and what they what the you know who are who we are and who we are not. And I think that will really help define, you know, things and uh, make the process a little bit easier, you know, kind of go forward. So I have a, a, a comment and kind of piggybacking on what um, Derek just said, I think that is a, a good idea to kind of revisit our spending you know, somewhere along the, the, the year. I don't know if we've ever done that before. Um, and I don't know if, if that's a, if that would be too much, you know, too much to do, um, you know, once we've approved a budget. Um, but I think for me, that, that would work better so we can see how we're spending, see where we're spending, see where we're not spending, and then allocate dollars from where, you know, funds are not being used into the HAP or some other line item where funds are being used and, and needs more funding um, in that line item. I, I definitely think that that's a, that's a good idea if, if that's something that we can do. So I think we can, um, on an ongoing basis, you know, continue to give um, information on what our expenditures are, um, the pipeline of programs, give updates on individual ones at certain advisory board meetings, but I do want to caution against uh, the expectation that we would fully maybe like rebudget in the middle of a year because this does have to get approved by city council. I know David Geiger is on the line, so if I'm getting any of this wrong, please correct me, but um, it would be a lot to kind of move things around from program to program in a given year. That being said, demonstration dollars would, I think, give us the flexibility to um, kind of move them into a different program. I know at the in March around March of 2020, I believe we put demonstration money into HSP on an emergency basis. So um, there's something we said for the flexibility of demo dollars, and I also would caution against thinking that we'll rebudget mid-year. Um, I think we'll end up with just a headache for everybody if we if we get to that point. So hearing lots of different ways of approaching this, which um, are to move funds from demo dollars, move funds from the small landlord fund and then also to leave everything where it is and um, potentially shift demo dollars as needed going forward. Does somebody feel strongly enough about those options to make a motion? I'm not making a motion, <laughs> just to be clear. Um, but I think to your point, if we want to move demo dollars, I think that should be a very, you know, scheduled, precise conversation because, you know, we're talking about, you know, any number of families that may get one benefit or no benefit, you know, based on what we're deciding. So I think if, I, I think the demo dollar move makes a lot of sense, you know, as long as we're very intentional about there's a time when we talk about demo dollars. So if we're five months in and we haven't tapped demo dollars, is that a time that we revisit and say, would a shift make sense? So that we're just not waiting in, in some weird limbo of you know, when do demo dollars, when do we really start having that conversation? So I agree with that strategy. I just wanna make sure it doesn't go missing so that when you know Derek's working on these projects and there are more families and they're sitting and waiting and there's a desperation growing that we can say, this is the moment where we're gonna make that determination to shift some dollars. So I would say um, I, I agree with that 
um, train of thought, but also we've kind of used it as kind of an emergency fund and like savings so that we've been able to respond to, um, you know, the, the church down the street that we did the housing, um, we helped with the, the, the homeless um, shelter that they had there. Like that wouldn't be a thing that you would necessarily be able to plan, but we could have moved it. And then when that need presented itself, which I, if I believe was in the dead of winter, we wouldn't have been able to help um, that. So perhaps to set aside maybe a certain percentage of demo dollars that we're gonna, you know, reallocate like because it is June 1st and we said we would do it versus, you know, whatever other piece we would leave um, to be flexible with, I guess would just be to be flexible with our flexibility because we don't want to uh, <laughs> uh, lock it in in a way that makes it unhelpful or um, it just as difficult to move as anything else. Um, but excellent, I, 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 ex excellent point. Um, did anybody else have so, a motion? Oh, Kelly, or I, comments. I'm, I'm actually, um, as, as, um, uh, I'm sorry, I needed to make sure that my microphone was good. As Derek Tillman was, was talking, the numbers in the far right column, uh, on the, on the chart, uh, from small landlord fund went from 375 to 400. And I'm, I'm actually okay with where things are at currently right now with uh, HAP at, you know, 2.1, um, the RGP at 3.8. Like, I, I, I am maybe ready to make a motion that based on sort of that movement, that small movement that happened, that we keep things where they're at, um, as proposed in the far right column. And then also, um, I don't know if this is a separate motion, but I think the idea, if, if there seems to be a greater need for funding in winter months for um, emergencies and things like that that are coming up, then maybe to the point of being intentional that we look to use a certain percentage of the demonstration program funds in um, between the months of November and, and February or something like that. I'll, I'll second that motion. Um, and then I do have a comment, but I guess if we want to finish that first. Well, yeah, if, if uh, we can hold on the comment. And Paul, if you could just restate your motion, um, which I believe, so, or, or if you want me to restate your motion is what I thought I heard, either or. Yeah, I, okay. I would actually, I think that you're great at that, so I would, okay. I would welcome that. All right. So... Um, and Kelly, before you do that, I mm -hmm. just want to note really quick, the movement that we saw on the screen was just me moving it back to what it originally was, just yes. FYI. So it is back to what we had at the start of the meeting. Yes, I checked the numbers when he uh, um, had said that. So yes, so this is a motion by Paul Spradley to accept our um, draft budget as presented initially at, the, uh, at this meeting and to review use of demo dollars um, again in February um, as needed. Did I get that right, Paul? That's good, thank you. Okay. Derek, was that the motion you intended to second? Yes, it is. Okay. Right. Um, any questions on that motion? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those, well, any opposed? And any abstentions? Oh, great, okay, great. We, good work, everybody. We have a draft budget, and um, Derek, you had a comment that you were about to make bef um, during your second. Yes, uh, I just wanted to bring back to light, um, as well as caution us, uh, that demo dollars is not just, well, was not intended to just be for large scale emergencies. It also could be something smaller scale. Uh, it was really intended to be you know, for things that didn't fit, you know, as, as clearly or as neatly into another bucket. Um, and that didn't have to be something large scale. Um, there were some large scale things we responded to, but, but you know, something smaller scale may come up, uh, something new or innovative may come up, um, et cetera. So just, just being aware of, of that to, to not just, you know, have our minds prone towards um, you know, something major um, as large scale. And I will note, um, 
on this document, I didn't indicate that, but on the document that I have in our um, proposal, it does encapsulate some of the things you just mentioned. I think we had, we had discussed some pilot projects and ability to just kind of have fun with it, do some of the, you know, maybe the new and innovative things that we hear about being done around the country. So no, thank you for um, keeping our, our, our minds open um, as to the use of demo dollars. Any other comments or questions from anyone before we move to um, the URAs? I have a request, and I know that it hasn't been brought up in a couple of years, but is there an accounting of the how the administrative funds have been spent since the start of HOF? We budget it, we allocate it. The way the legislation reads is that it's up to a million, and I think people forget that. It doesn't, it isn't always a million, but is there, we had talked about that early, that we really haven't had an accounting here at the HOF of how those funds were spent. So I'm assuming that you guys spend it and keep track of it. It's something, is that something that we can share with the advisory board over the, in the next month or two? Yeah, it is um, information that gets put into the HOF audit. Um, we can clarify any of it if you know there's questions about what shows up in the audit but um there yeah it is accounted for it's invoiced for um by the uras finance department thank you um, and I, I just have one other comment just to set expectations for the advisory board um that this is now an approved draft plan what the ura is going to do um by the end of the day tomorrow is post this on our hof web page um, as a draft plan with just a section for comment from the public um, with, and so we'll collect that over the next month. And um, at the November advisory board meeting is when we would seek a final approval. And at that point, the URA board, which is the governing board of HOF would approve this um, after they do, it would go to city council. So just to spell that process out so everyone knows sort of where we are at in this um, progression. Great, thank you. Um, and now um, your administrative updates. Give me one second to switch my screens again. Okay, so the one administrative item we had, again, is that uh, Megan Confer Hammond's presentation on fair housing is being postponed. So we will be sending out a doodle poll for timing for an alternative meeting. She suggested having a meeting sometime in November um, that's not during the regular Hoff board meeting to discuss fair housing. Um, so we will be sending out a poll to, with Megan in hand as well on times that work best for her um, to get the board's options for times that might work. And that's all we have. So um, some other administrative updates um, from me and the Hoff. Um, the first is that there is um, there are budget discussions around Hoff currently taking place at the city. Um, Mayor Ganey's budget includes um, an increase to our, um, to our budget um, from our 10 to $12.5 million. So as we've you know, discussed um, quite, quite a bit that there is you know, much more need than we have funds available for. Um, that has not been voted um, on yet. A little advocacy never hurt anybody um, to get that approved if you would like to, um, if you would like to do what they do. Um, to encourage um, that increase, um, you are uh, welcome to do so. Uh, we are all, you know, city residents. Kelly, what would be the mechanism for that for both Hoff members and you know our partners? What what's the best route to go about that? <laughs> yeah. So so the budget has been proposed by um, the mayor's office, and now what the next steps would be that would be voted on by council, and so. 
those would be who, um, as we sit in their house, um, <laughs> telling people to, you know, that would be the legislative process is that council would be approving that budget. Um, and so that would be who would need um, a friendly nudge. Um, to hey, Sally. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be a budget survey, I'm told as well. They're going to, during a second round of feedback. So that would be another um, mechanism to get feedback as well as the hearings. Thanks, Joanna. So yes. Also, uh, that I believe is posted to the city website in the mayor's office section, or is it? Uh, yep. Okay, that was a nod for those who are not looking at the screen. Oh, how does how, if it's not. how does that impact the discussion and the vote that we just took? So that was that, that was so that was going to be my next part. Is that we have um, by the time that that budget would be passed, it would be December. So we could and then redo all of the things, um, which does not seem to make a lot of sense, even though we don't, we wouldn't get, be getting the money until spring as traditionally um, put. And so we don't have to make a, a formal decision on how to do that today. But my recommendation would be for us to consider, um, and I am not the math whiz that they are at the end of the table, but, consider, but holding these percentages so that if we decided that this we're going to give 4.2% to this particular line item under this particular category that we just grow the dollar amount in alignment with the percentages that we just voted on. Um, unless we, and again, we could perhaps shift some things as needed, but I don't think we necessarily want to revise across three columns, however many line items that we want to go through this entire process again. Um, even though we do want to advocate for additional funds, but that would be my first recommendation would be that we get a budget back that reviews, that just kind of grows those um, proportionally and then see if that makes sense before we start over again from scratch with new blank budget worksheets. Couldn't we just, and I think this is what you're saying, but couldn't we just allocate the additional 2.5 wherever, you know, um, we felt was the greatest need and priority, you know, in alignment with, uh, you know, the surveys and things that, have, that were done, but also connected to, you know, the conversation we're having. So couldn't we just really just allocate the additional 2.5 and not touch um, the initial funds that, uh, that we utilized? So that would be going through this process again with the 2.5 across all of the categories. Is that what you're recommending? Leave the 10 and then just rebudget the 2.5 in the same Correct. way that we budgeted it. Correct. This but the 2.5 may only go to three buckets as opposed to seven. We would have to go back. I mean, we would still have to go through this entire process to, in order to do that, um, which I'm not saying that we can't do. Um, I'm just saying that those are kind of the two options would be that to figure out where the 2.5 goes adding to this or to say we want to proportionally um, move, move this around. I mean, proportionally grow this from 10 to 12. Um, so those are just the two options that we have. Again, we don't have to decide um, right this minute because that won't, um, approval process won't take place, but just um, to Mark's question, we had kind of discussed um, those options as being how we would want to um, move things around. We certainly wouldn't want to go back and open up the entire 12.5, um, but I'm, again, I would imagine we would have to have a, um, if we move things and don't grow proportionally, I think we might have to, uh, David, I think, is on the line, and he may not know off the top of his head, but go back through the same, we might have to open the public comment process again in, in a similar fashion um, if it's a, if we're shifting again. I don't know. Yeah, I just, I can't stress enough how preliminary this budget is, so we, these are all interesting ideas, but we'll have to kind of cross that bridge truly when we when we come to it so we will have two more meetings to to think about it but first i do want to hear from david because he has popped up on i can see him and so i'd like to hear from him hey kelly um yeah i apologize i should have prepared more um for this meeting i can't answer your specific question on exactly which steps would have to be repeated but the advisory board would have to go through an amendment process would have to advance to the URA board and then be voted on again by council. Um, some of the sort of inputs to that amendment process, I'd have to go back and check the legislation. So I apologize for not having that on hand right now. 
Um, but I agree, it's a, it's a very preliminary budget. The mayor will present, I imagine, a slightly updated version uh, to council in mid-November. So it will be interesting to see what's in that sort of final proposal, and that's what council will uh, deliberate and, and amend and vote on uh, by the end of December. Thank you, David. Um, so again, pre preliminarily, but we just wanted to let everybody know and also give us an opportunity to kind of get our ducks in a row, both internally and externally ar around uh, that potential um, additional funds coming down the pipe. Um, next item is that there are several new advisory members who have been nominated. We have some vacancies. We have some folks whose um, terms have come to um, an end. Um, I have not. I've not seen them, but they are going forward in front of um, council for approval. And so we, in the next couple of months, should have some new faces, both on the Zoom screen and around the table. Um, so that's kind of exciting and something to keep an eye out for. Um, and also, depending on how long this process is of revising, hopefully revising the budget, we'll speak it, you know, speak it into fruition that there will be more money. We will need to <laughs> revise the budget that they would, that potentially there will be additional members um, who will have their opportunity uh, to align with their priorities as, as uh, more funds come online and they're making those choices. Um, I don't believe we've had any committee meetings in the past month. I think we've been, all of our meetings that have not been around this table um, have been as it relates to the um, allocation plan, um, unless I'm incorrect if anybody's been, have we had additional meetings this month? I don't believe so. Stay right there. Okay. Um, all right. So then we will move on to uh, Jad's um, programmatic expenditures and updates. Yeah. So really the only big change um, from last month is with the small landlord fund, we did have one closure on that, that which changed the percentage quite a bit. Um, and we also actually have another project that's worth about 80000 um, that is in the process as well and was approved. Um, so that will be an additional large percentage increase for that program since that one has um, more limited funds compared to some of the other on this list. But that's the only um, major adjustment from last month that I have to report. So if, again, just to go back to that really quick, the blue is what is encumbered or spent, it might not necessarily be spent, but it's committed and under agreement that you're obligated. And the gray is what's left? Correct, yep. And I will note with some of this though, as Evan and Derek both highlighted a little bit before, there are some where, you know, there are projects in the pipeline that they are not technically committed. Um, like he said, with the for sale development program, you know, really there's all that money is in the pipeline, but it is not all technically committed. Same with the um, homeowner assistance program. That's almost 100% um, in the pipeline with projects. Uh, so this only shows what has been committed or closed um, in respect to these programs. And HSP, the, we only get those reports quarterly now that we're with DHS, right? That is so, correct. So and that'll probably like jump by yep. chunk, by large chunks. So that one as well, I wasn't able to get the information from DHS prior uh, to this meeting, unfortunately. So I wasn't able to incorporate this past quarter, but uh, I do expect that that will go up quite a bit from uh, what they give me here this month. Thank you. Any other questions for Jad? All right. So um, on to announcements. Our next um, advisory board meeting is November 3rd, which is a Thursday at 2 o'clock um, here in city council chambers and also um, hybrid um, via Zoom. And I believe that's it. Any other announcements? Okay. If not, then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. We don't need a second. Thank you very much, everybody, for your time and attention today. Um, we stand adjourned. Thank you.